Good evening, parents. My name is Mr. Argain. I'm the sixth grade assistant principal, and I am also the assistant principal in charge of Title I. That is why you're here tonight. We are welcoming you to our annual parent meeting for Title I to give you a little information about the program and how we will be using those funds this year. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start on our presentation. And again, this is our Title I meeting. Um, we are here to talk to you a little bit about the program because there are funds that are associated with it. And we want you to understand a little bit more about what is available to your son or daughter. But before we start, here's a small message from Ms. Morales, our principal. Good evening, Ophelia parents. I'm very proud to be here with you this evening. I am Ellie Morales, the principal of Okahili Middle School, and we have some great information for you tonight. So the purpose of this meeting is that as a result of the Every Student Succeeds Act, which is a federal law, it requires Title I schools to hold annual meetings for parents to give you information to know about your rights and also to include any requirements that are needed to be completed for Title I. Uh, families are always encouraged to ask questions and we'll give you information on how you can contact us with those questions. What is Title I? Well, Title I is part of a federal law that grants money to schools that help students meet their educational needs and goals. It provides teachers with professional development to make them better skilled and it also supports school and family partnerships so that we work together and our students do the best that we can. How does a school become Title I? Well, how are we eligible? Because not all schools are Title I schools. The qualification for Title I schools is based on the statistic that is called free and reduced priced lunch. And the threshold for that is that if we have 70% of our students that are on free and reduced price lunch, we do qualify as a Title I school. And what does that mean for our school? Well, it means that we are going to have a large amount of funds that are going to help us support your students, support our teachers, and ultimately support the families. These funds are federal funds, and these go above and beyond what the district gives us for paying salaries and utilities and all those different things. The rights for our parents and families to be informed and involved. So how do we get you involved? How do we let you know about Title I? Because there's a few different things that you can get yourself involved with. The first one is to watch this meeting to be able to know exactly the ins and outs about Title I. We also have what's called the parents' right to be involved, which means they can come and ask questions, do all the different things, figure out about all the different services for their son or daughter. We also have what's called our parent, our parent and family engagement plan. And that talks in detail about how we are going to work together to make your son or daughter um, be effective and successful. And also our school parent compact, which we actually need parents to sign that compact, which is an agreement that we are going to work together to make our students successful. Now, for our school one title one program, you know, the ben who benefits from it? And the truth is that everybody benefits from Title I. The community benefits, our families benefit, our teachers benefit because they become better teachers, and our students benefit because ultimately they become better students. These are some of our goals. This is our performance on our winter diagnostic in January of 2020. Our students are also taking the fall diagnostic 
to figure out what gaps have been created as a result of COVID and the expected scores that we have, which are our goals, so that we can increase performance and get to where we need to get. Some of the highlights, well, what, what do we intend to do with, with Title I? What is the ultimate goal? Well, we want to increase proficiency in the areas of language arts, math, science, and civics. Those are our core courses. We also um, want to hire coaches, which we already have for math and language arts, a teacher for our school-based team, and an extra teacher for social studies to keep those numbers down. So that's what some of the things that we did with our Title I funds. And the parent engagement parents will also have two more workshops, which I'll talk to you about different dates to help you know how to help your son or daughter in school. So our focus to meet our expected outcomes, we want to share with you how we used our Title I funds this year. So our Title I funds this year were used to purchase teaching positions. Those teaching positions keep our numbers in classes low. So our average class size was about 19, which is the, the classification or to be in compliance with the district is actually 22 students. So we use that to keep those numbers down. Extended learning opportunities like tutoring, we offer and we will be offering in the very near future, tutoring before school, tutoring after school, and even tutoring on Saturdays. Now, it looks a little different this year because of COVID, but we will have those in a virtual realm and that will be available to students as well. We also use it for technology and supplies here in the classroom, different cameras, Chromebooks, supplies, those different things that we need to function as a school, especially in the 21st century. We also use those funds to have uh, parent family engagement. We do uh, parent family trainings because the, the most important thing is many parents want to know, well, how can I support and help my student, especially in this new virtual world? So we will have trainings to help you learn how you can support them at home. We also are using our funds for professional development. We want to work with, uh, we're having our coaches actually train our teachers to better strategies, new strategies, virtual strategies, different ways that they can always improve their craft. And we know that as people get involved, as parents get involved, as students get involved and they take advantage of these tutoring programs, we know that we are more likely to see students getting better grades, doing better on tests, attend school, adapt to change, have better social skills, be promoted to the next grade, graduate from high school eventually, and continue their education after high school as well. The Parent and Family Engagement Plan is shortened. It is an acronym called PFEP, and it describes how we involve families in their students' education. So this is the actual plan on how we're going to use you, the parents, to help us make our students successful. Okay, it has everything from a mission statement to the actual details the training for the teachers, the training for the families, and all of that information is available to you. It will be on the website. We'll talk to about that a little later. Our parent trainings, if you would like to now, definitely take note, there are two trainings already set with their dates and times. They are gonna be virtual this year because of COVID, but we have our first workshop which is to help parents learn to navigate through Google Classroom and how to support their students better. And that workshop is on October 30th, the day before Halloween at 6 p.m. Our second training, and this is helping students find the main idea. So it's a language arts skill that we're gonna teach our parents help. Again, helping our students, supporting them at home. And that one is on November 20th, 
2020 at 6 p.m. So those are two of the trainings that are coming up that are available for you to attend. And we will definitely have more information about that. The next part of it is a school parent compact. A school parent compact is an actual written agreement that is signed by parents, by school personnel. And what it does is it outlines the responsibilities of the of the student, the responsibilities of the parent, and the responsibility of the school in helping them achieve what they need to achieve, which is their ultimate educational potential. And again, our student, our school parent compact will be available on our website as well, where you can download it, print it, and sign it, and send it in with your son or daughter or you can actually come down to the school to sign a student parent compact. Those paper copies are available in the Title I office. The parents' right to know. So parents, you have to know what's available to you, what you, can, what you should be knowing, and all the different information that is available to you. You can always have the right to ask about the qualifications of the teachers that your student has. Um, also, if there are any non-teacher personnel that are providing any kind of instruction, you are also able to ask about their qualifications as well. Stud uh, families can also be informed about if their teacher is taught for if their student is taught for four or more weeks by a teacher who does not meet the certification requirements for the grade level or subject being taught and how their child perform on state tests like fsa eoc ssas all that information is available to you and we can help you navigate on how to get that information the migrant the migrant education program is for our migrant students and it basically outlines all the different things that we will do to help our students to make sure that everybody has an even playing field and that everybody can learn no matter what what conditions or what situations they run in we want everybody to have their ultimate potential so we have our migrant education program laid out for you here we also understand, especially through this tough situation that we're having with COVID, that some students do experience homelessness. And we actually have a program to help support that student. That, that program is called the McKinney-Vento Homeless Education Program, MVP for short. And it helps students that might be living in a shelter, in a vehicle, you know, any, any tough situations that they might be living in, any abandoned buildings or anything, as soon as we find out that information, we start shipping resources to that student right away. We also have a McKinney-Vento contact here on, on school campus. So please, more than happy to come reach out, talk to the Title I office, and we'll get you in, in touch with that person because we provide everything from school supplies, uniforms, supplemental services, free school meals. We'll make sure that that student has everything that they possibly could need so that they could be successful with us here at school. And if you have any questions about McKinney-Vento or if you feel that you need to start that program and get those services and resources up for your student, please call the number on the screen or email the email mvphomeless at pommyschools.org. Okay, we have coming close to the end of the presentation. In conclusion, parents, you have the opportunity to ask and, pro and provide feedback on this presentation. You can contact Carmen Moreira, 434-3236. She is our Title I contact here at school. My name is Mr. Argain. I am the administrator in charge of Title I, you can call the sixth grade office anytime. That is 561-434-3262. Also, we'd like to know how we did on this presentation. And we have 
all the information and all the documents you could possibly need on our Okihili website, www.okihili.org. You can do the evaluation for the Title I presentation, and you can also find that parent compact and the PFEP agreement on how we will have the details of how we will support our students there. So we really are happy that you are with us here tonight. If there are any other questions, any other concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. We are here to help your son or daughter, and we look forward to a successful school year here with you despite all these challenges. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great night.